Thank you very much again, and uh, thanks to UNHCR uh, for giving us the opportunity to take part in the guideline development. Uh, I will talk about uh, the NATEC um, hazard and risk assessment uh, part of the guideline. Uh, I work as a scientific officer at the European Commission Joint Research Center, and the Joint Research Center is the European Commission's in-house science and knowledge service, which carry out research in order to provide independent scientific advice and support uh, to the Union. And the authors of the chapter were uh, me and uh, Amos Nietzsche and Elizabeth Krausman uh, from the Tech Risk Group uh, of, of the uh, Center. Uh, so the group is mainly working on a NATEC risk assessment. So um, NATECs are uh, an abbreviation of natural hazard triggered technological accidents. And actually, the impacts of nature hazards on industry installations and infrastructures and they process, store, and transport hazardous materials and usually cause accidents involving fires, explosions, and uh, toxic releases. And these kind of accidents uh, are of often overlooked, uh, although they can have significant social, environmental, and economic impacts. And we saw many examples of such incidents. Um, and different types of nature hazards uh, can cause uh, uh, NATEC uh, incidents. But the most important one is, is the earthquakes. So uh, basically, um, in 1999, Kojiel earthquake in Turkey, and in 2011, Tohoku earthquake in, in Japan, um, we faced with um, significant um, NATEC incidents, uh, which caused raging fires and explosions in, in uh, big oil refinery complexes. Um, and they, they resulted significant economical damage. Um, in fact, um, among the process and storage units that are commonly found in the industry, atmospheric storage tanks, especially the floating roof tanks, are particularly vulnerable. And the likelihood of, likelihood of ignition uh, is, is very high uh, in the earthquakes, as you can see uh, from, from the picture. The second nature hazard, um, which, which is um, significant um, is the floods, and, and they can be also caused uh, during hurricanes, uh, which we saw actually qu quite recently during Hurricane Harvey. And the floods are important because uh, usually they cause overflow of containment dikes at the facilities, and um, the released substance that would normally be captured within the dikes can easily be dispersed by, by the flood waters and contaminate uh, the, the environment. Uh, but not only uh, the industry facilities, but also oil pipelines and gas pipelines transporting significant amounts of hazardous substances are also quite vulnerable to nature hazards. Um, and because they're usually located in the countryside, detection of, of the accidents can be late, and this may uh, cause significant spills. Um, it is also the same uh, for offshore uh, platforms. Uh, usually, uh, if something happens, uh, it's quite difficult uh, to deal with. But uh, this kind of nature hazards uh, are not the only ones that trigger NATEX. And in fact, NATEX can be triggered by any kind and any size of nature hazard. And it doesn't need to be a major one. And uh, lightnings, for example, is the third uh, most important uh, nature hazard that, uh, that causes uh, NATEX. And they occur quite frequently and everywhere. Um, basically, there is a risk of a NATEC when there is a hazardous materials installation located in a nature hazard zone. So uh, basically, we don't see any difference between a developing country uh, or a developed country uh, from NATEC risk point of view. And we expect to see a more NATECs in the future due to more frequent nature hazards, due to the factors like climate change and also industrial growth and increasing vulnerability of the society. Um, so, uh, for the exposure and vulnerability, uh, there are some characteristics of, of NATEX which should be taken into consideration, especially for um, a national um, risk assessment. The first one is the simultaneous releases from multiple sources uh, over a wide area, because usually when a NATEX incident happens, that means it, 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 there is a wide area that is affected, and we expect many facilities uh, to be affected from, from the nature hazard. Um, usually, the life signs which are needed for, for, for the mitigation of the accidents are, are not available, and, and, and the, the resources, the emergency response resources, are usually uh, scarce and, and in competition. 
and with the, with, with the emergency response to the nature hazard itself. Um, the presence of hazardous substances, they hamper emergency response activity, and usually um, the civil protection measures are, are also not functional, which especially affects the population um, around the facilities. Um, so NATEC risk assessment is a powerful tool for identifying a NATEC hazards and estimating associated risks. Uh, but what we usually see is um, just overlay of nature hazard risks and industrial installations, it doesn't indicate the NATEC risk because in order to talk about the NATEC risk, you need to know what kind of physical damage uh, would be expected from the nature hazard and what will be the, the related uh, consequences. And this needs a detailed analysis. We should consider uh, multiple and simultaneous releases, the damage safety barriers, uh, unavailability of the support systems, the unusual environmental conditions, and also the cascading effect, effects like, like the domino effects. Um, so um, there can be different um, risk assessment um, methods uh, that can be applied for, for a national um, risk assessment purposes. They can be qualitative, they can be uh, quantitative, um, but um, in, in independent of this, basically uh, you need to characterize the nature hazard and uh, identify the, the damage severity on site at the facility with, uh, with the damage likelihood. Uh, so in, in the chapter, uh, we have provided uh, references uh, which, which um, has detailed information about this, this, this method, so I don't want to go um, too much into, into the details. Um, but the critical thing is um, because uh, the, the, the risk assessment requires information about the nature hazard and information about the industries, both of which uh, sh are, are actually part of natural risk assessments, uh, about that specific topic. Uh, if you collect the data properly, and then the data need for NATEC risk assessment is actually minimal. So um, the, the proper NATEC risk assessment can be done easily if the data is collected in a proper way. And there are some good practices uh, which address uh, NATEC risks. Uh, the first one is the European Union Seveso 3 Directive, uh, which is published in 2012. And the directive explicitly addresses NATEX and requires installations to identify and evaluate NATEX risks, um, which is a significant step uh, for, for prevention of, of NATEX. And the second one uh, internationally is OECD, NATEX uh, Addendum uh, to the Guiding Principles for Chemical Accident Prevention, Preparedness and Response. Um, in, in the previous version of, of, of the guiding principles, actually NATEX were not uh, explicitly mentioned and uh, talked about, but the, the new version is a special um, um, consideration for, for NATEX and provides a guideline uh, uh, to the countries. There are also some examples uh, from, from, from different countries. For example, in, 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 in states, um, California Accidental Release Prevention Program uh, calls, calls for NATEC risk assessments in case of earthquakes. Uh, and in, in, in Japan, the law on industrial safety and industrial disaster prevention, uh, they require additional measures to, to reduce NATEC risks. Uh, there are also some tools uh, currently available for, for NATEC risk assessment. And uh, the first one, which I can name, is, is eNATEC, uh, which is an accident database specifically developed for, for NATEC. Um, it is important because by analyzing the past accidents, uh, conclusions can be drawn concerning the most vulnerable types of industrial e equipment or a common damage and failure modes, which are useful uh, for, for risk assessment purposes, especially uh, while developing these scenarios. And the second one is ORIPAR, which is a quantitative risk assessment uh, system uh, for chemical facilities, and it provides um, a specific module for, for earthquake impacts. Um, on, on industrial facilities, which is limited to single sites. Um, there is also a um, um, risk assessment um, tool developed by JRC, uh, which is called RAPIDAN, uh, which provides a semi-quantitative um, NATEC risk assessment um, and mapping functionality uh, for, for local purposes and also for regional and also national NATEC risk assessment um, in a quick and easier way. Um, so um, basically, 
I can tell that um, being an emerging risk, um, even for the developed countries, national authorities are, are still not assessing properly the NATEC risks in a comprehensive way. Um, but there are some, some, some progress. And with these tools and, and, and methods and guidelines, uh, we think that in the future, better NATEC assessing can be done, um, especially at the national level. One critical um, thing is, um, although um, it's a national uh, risk assessment, um, the NATEC needs to be Need, needs the risk to be assessed at the, at the local level uh, because you need information specifically for the industry. So although the national risk assessment is, is, is done considering the country's conditions, for NATEX, uh, you need to do the risk assessment locally. So this is a little bit different uh, from, from natural, the other natural hazards. Thank you very much.